Okay, so you're going to want to actually save this. So I'm going to do File, Save As. And this is a file navigation. It just looks a little different. You can click on your H drive, go to Big Bertha Rocket. And if you want to, create a new directory here. You can go up a level, back to the H drive. So that's how you go up and back in the folder system. And right here is where the file name goes. So I'm going to make this 150114 Big Bertha Rocket Render. Uh, let's see. How about we add Blender so that it's very clear that this is the one that's from Blender. And then you save it as a Blender file. Dot blend. And we'll be able to work from there. So let's take a look here. One of the things that I would like to do to uh, get us started is to create. And you can see you can create a lot of different things, fun to play around, add to your scene. But we're going to start off with just a plane. And adding the plane, oh, it looks like it's way over there. What an interesting place for it to have started. I don't know. Usually it starts right in the middle. But as you can see, you can move it around. But it's a very small plane, not an airplane, just a flat surface. I'm going to hit the S key on my keyboard, and you can see it very quickly allows me to scale this plane up. And then I can move it around like that. Let me just hit a quick render. And now we've got a shadow cast onto the plane. So it gives our rocket a place to stand. So that's a pretty handy thing, and we can see how shadows work and get different points of view. So the other thing that I want to make sure and show you is that all of this gray right here is going to show up as gray when we render. We haven't added anything in there yet. And the best thing for us to do is to make this transparent. That gives us more options later of changing out the sky into stars and that sort of thing as we render our rocket. So let's go take a look at where those settings are going to be. When we go to our render here, if we're in Blender Render, we're going to want to make sure that this RGBA is set instead of one of these others. Now this is the default, and you'll notice that the picture format is PNG that has transparency. So that's extremely important for us to have on. The other thing we want to do when we go to our global here, I believe, uh, where our environmental lighting was. No, oh, that's not it. Lots of different places to click. I keep getting lost. There's a place that I'm going to go to, and I'm going to change this out. I believe it's under shading for the render. So I'm going to just probably cut that part out. And here we are under ray tracing alpha. Alpha is set to sky, and instead we want it to be transparent. So when I hit F12 now, you can see that all of this turns transparent up here, which means we can put anything we want back there. Now, the shadow may not cast on it. But we could have stars going by or put it underwater. Whatever you want in Blender, you can then put in with other programs very, very easily. So we're going to be doing some clouds and stars and stuff in After Effects because they look a little bit nicer. So that is all if you have the Blender render turned on. Now there's another kind of rendering. It's a bit on the experimental side. It's called Cycles Rendering. And if I render with that, you're going to see that it does change things up quite a bit here. And we lost that transparency with this render mode. Now, it doesn't look as nice to me. You still have your shadows and the light. Uh, it isn't the environmental lighting anymore. But it does have some pretty cool effects, such as smoke and flame and stuff, that we'll probably want to use with this project. So we're going to be learning about both of them. So if we've got our cycles render on, there's another way that we need to turn off that sky that's gray. We're going to actually make, under film rendering, transparent. So if we look at it now, we get these, this checkerboard back that we had in the Blender render. 
so that we can maintain our transparency. Now, watching this whole video to find out where that is is not the handiest way to go. So what I've done is I've provided a Photoshop file under the S Hicks drive Big Bertha Assets. It's the Blender Transparency Settings. So I've got for either the Cycles Render or the Blender Render, whichever one you're working on, and there's two folders. So this is just a screenshot of the rendering. As you can see here, we've got the camera, and we're under shading with the ray tracing set to transparent. So let me zoom out again and show you what I did. I blurred out everything that wasn't important on that screen and even made a little highlight so maybe this screenshot may be all we need in the future and you could save it and keep it so you know Blender Render will give us the transparency if we go to our render settings camera open up shading and change it to transparent ray tracing. If it doesn't work check your output to make your still a PNG using the RGBA with alpha that means transparency. Let me turn off the blender render here we have the cycles same setup. You got your cycles screenshot cycles render up here and if we blur out everything else we know that we're doing the rendering output and just changing the film to transparent. This PNG and RGBA should always stay the same. That's our best format for creating videos. When we make a video out of this, it'll give us a whole bunch of individual pictures, 30 for every second of footage. And we will then string those together in Premiere and be able to put things in the background with transparency. So that's transparency in Blender, as well as saving your work. Let me just minimize this for the moment. Go back over here, again, that transparency. Learn where these different settings are. 